everything runs on DNS. Every single thing runs on DNS. This episode is made possible by OIT VoIP. Find your best-in-class revenue generation for MSPs all over the world. Learn more via the link in the show notes. You're watching MSP Dispatch, your source for news, community events, and commentary in the MSP channel. I'm Tony Francisco, and in today's story from ArsTechnica.com, Microsoft plans to lock down Windows DNS like never before. Microsoft is preparing to tighten the security of Windows DNS like never before. Traditionally, translating human readable domains into numerical IP addresses poses security risks as lookups often lack encryption. The vulnerability extends to servers, which can mistakenly resolve to malicious IP addresses. Additionally, user devices can easily bypass authorized lookup servers favoring malicious alternatives. In response, Microsoft introduced ZTDNS, that's Zero Trust DNS, aimed at securing DNS landscapes within Windows networks. ZTDNS features encrypted and authenticated connections between end user client and DNS servers, along with giving administrators tight control over which domain servers will resolve. By integrating ZTDNS into Windows DNS Engine and Firewall, Microsoft aims to enable organizations to apply stricter DNS policies, enhancing network security. However, implementing it presents challenges requiring organizations to adjust their network operations and undergo thorough testing to ensure smooth integration. Ray, let's talk about this for a moment. Um, first off, have you ever heard of DNS? I heard it's this like weird thing where just 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 for the record, I want to point out when we when we talk to people and and uh, we talk about like simple things, you say like DNS, and they go, "Is that like a domain name server?" Yes, something like that. It's literally the thing that everything <laughs> everything runs on. Everything. What what are you 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 doing? What are you doing? What? <laughs> Can you read that? <laughs> what, what? What is that? OIT VoIP. It's not DNS. There's no way it's DNS. It's not DNS. <laughs> the the infamous haiku, the infamous DNS haiku, is my desk map. So. Oh, oh, everything and, runs on DNS. Every single thing runs on DNS, unless you're a mega geek and you're like, oh, I remember that IP address. Unless you're an Uber quantum Dude, geek. Says, I remember Matt, that IPv6. Oh, look at you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going back to I'm going back to Mac. Like, give me so, the Mac addresses. I will go ahead and yes. modify the prox the ARP table. I'm good. Don't worry about me. Okay. The ARP like, table. You, <laughs> like that is a classification of networking nerd in my circles. Okay. There's the one that's like. Oh, I know a little bit of IPv6. And then I know the, the local loopnet addresses for IPv6. And then there's the idiots like me that do 127.1 because that's how you concatenate 127.001. Or you do colon colon one, which is the loopback also for v6. And then there's a class of nerd that understands BGP. And then there's the Uber class of nerd. Yeah. And then there's the You're Uber, that Uber class of nerd. You, you talk BGP. The Uber like class so of like nerds <laughs> knows the commands. So you can reach MAC address to MAC address from Windows command line without assigning IP addresses. Yes, that's possible. I'll show you another day or I'll show you that I'm in Discord. But that's if you ever have an IP address conflict, you can still get past it. And we've all had that 192.168.1.1 firewall that came default and conflicted with something else. Oh. You don't have to take it off the network. You can still access it by MAC. So what you're saying is that you don't think DNS is a big deal. That's what you're saying. Um, and so, no, so I'm, it, saying, <laughs> I'm saying for the normies, for the normies. What, is, what are your thoughts on, on Microsoft? I mean, this is zero trust DNS is something that, and, and, and let me just sidetrack just a little bit. Um, it, you know, my, my email experience, uh, MX records, mail exchange records. A little records. bit of email experience, right? Uh, yeah. How those so, exchange so, oh God, I got to go back to therapy now. So, so my point is that MX records, everyone uses three to four MX records, which are traditional, and people don't recognize that the DNS that is retrieved, the MX records, the weight of those MX records are never respected, or very, not even 50%. It's not never, even 50%. Never. And, and so, it's caching. so you, yeah. It, yeah, well, it's just randomly, they wait, it's, it's just the weirdest way they, they, they pull yeah. it. The point I'm trying to make out of this 
is that I believe that DNS records as a whole is an issue with that communication. Then there's the subtleties. I was re I was referencing the MX records inside the waiting system there. And then there's a whole bunch of there's SPF records and tokens of right of other components. But this, I believe, is the first step into creating that DNS record issue. Am I on the right page on that? Am I missing something? What are your thoughts on this? Um, it's cool. I love it. Zero Trust Network's absolutely the way to go. Um, you know how I always talk about MSP being like 10 years behind enterprise, right? And I think we've cut that down to maybe six to eight years at this point. Um, but we're still behind. Um, <laughs> this is one of those things where that's really cool, Microsoft. Cloudflare did this in 2020, um, which is what we use. Um, Cloudflare announced ZTNE SIM cards in 2022. And then when I bring it back to MSP lagging behind enterprise, Citricom has been doing SASE and ZTNE for how long now? And they're not the only ones. You have Total, you have plenty of others in the MSP space. Um, so I'm glad Microsoft's making a native solution. That is the linchpin here. Just like you have, um, I should ask Tom Lawrence on Wednesday when he does his live show. Um, it's the underpinning for tail scale and uh, zero tier. You know what I'm talking about. That is built into the kernel that you have that networking layer. Oh, I feel like such a bad networking nerd. I just called myself Uber networking nerd and I just forgot the freaking term. Anyway. For the record, I'd like to point chat. out that you have forgotten more than most people have actually learned in their experience. So, so let's put that in perspective. Hey, you know, real quick, I, I think we're on that because the story will go on and on. You and I could talk about this forever. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say though, and I'd love to talk about this in Discord, I believe that Microsoft is cleaning this up, which is amazing. That unfortunately yes. leaves a lot of things that are still really dirty. And I do believe your next notable mention is exactly about that. Yeah, man. Speaking of dirty things, Androids has been a dirty boy. All right. In my main notable mention, billions of Android devices are open to dirty stream attack in an article written by Jai Vijayan for Dark Reading. Microsoft researchers recently discovered several vulnerable Android apps, including some with over 500 million installs at risk of remote code execution attacks and token theft due to a common security flaw. Google's Android security research team was notified and has already provided guidance for app developers. Microsoft also alerted vendors like Xiaomi and WPS Office, who have since addressed the problem. However, Microsoft believes more apps may be vulnerable. The problem occurs when Android apps share files without validating content, potentially allowing rogue apps to compromise receiving apps and execute malicious code. Both Microsoft and Google have provided tips to developers to prevent the issue, and users can reduce the risk by ensuring their Android apps are up to date and by only installing apps from known trusted sources. And Tony, cue the Apple doesn't have this problem. If you found this episode eye-opening, catch more MSP Dispatch at 10 a.m. throughout the week. Share your thoughts below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network.